Welcome friends. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, literature reviews and as I spoke in my previous presentation uh, when we're talking about uh, research papers then probably literature reviews occupy a part uh, along with the introduction but when we have to do dissertations or thesis then probably almost 15 to 20 percent of the writing is about literature reviews. And that is where literature reviews are, are so important that before we uh, start talking about uh, literature reviews, uh, let me first uh, discuss about what a literature review is not. So uh, to begin with, it is not an annotated bibliography where we are just summarizing and describing sources. So here we are not only summarizing and describing, but we are going something uh, somewhere beyond that. And that's where a literature review is, it talks about synthesizing and synthesizing sources that relate to particular themes and uh, concepts. And if I have to uh, draw a similarity between or if I have to draw differences between what an annotated bibliography and a literature review is, uh, people have uh, compared them to still pictures and a movie. In a movie, uh, we have still pictures, but we use all those still pictures to tell stories. So that is the difference. So it's, it, it, it is a summary at, uh, at one point. But that summary has to be synthesized into a cogent uh, uh, argument. And that's what uh, we have to be clear about. Uh, there are very many different approaches to a similar theme. And we must be very careful not to cherry pick sources. Because often the uh, impulse is to cherry pick uh, sources that support our point of view. And probably that will not be the right thing to do because we must be open to acknowledging all the different approaches and perspectives. So we have to weave together all the arguments in the summary that we spoke of. So uh, we have to be uh, careful to take in the other point of view as well. Uh, if we have to draw a parallel between what uh, a research uh, literature review is and what the methodological sections are, then, uh, you know, there is, there is a very uh, strong parallel that I can talk about. And the parallel is that just like the uh, method section talks about the methodological choices that have shaped our project, the literature review discusses the theoretical choices that have shaped our pro uh, project. So we will be talking about uh, the theoretical foundations of our work through the lit literature review. And that is why the purpose is a lot more than, as I said at the beginning, it's a lot more than just summarizing uh, uh, all the uh, various strands of uh, argument in the uh, uh, field. Uh, for today's presentation, I have uh, followed these six uh, books and, and more. So I would want to acknowledge all these authors from Dave Harris's uh, book on literature review and research design to Arlene Fink's book to this book by uh, Mashi and McAvoy, uh, where, where they talk about literature review, six steps to success. Then this book uh, by Chris Hart, this one by Sarah Ef uh, Efron and Ruth Ravid. And there are a lot more books. So, uh, for, uh, but uh, for today's presentation, I have relied uh, mainly on these six uh, books. So right at the beginning, we must be very clear that literature review combines both summary and synthesis. Summary, as we know, is just a recap of the important information of the source. But synthesis is reorganizing and reshuffling that information that informs us how we are planning a research problem. So that way, it's, it's a combination of both summary and synthesis. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, ways a literature review is important. And one of it is that it helps us distinguish what has been done and what needs to be done. So in a way, it provides me with a reason for why I'm doing this particular research. And it also helps me discover important variables relevant to the topic that I'm researching. So uh, synthesizing is, is, uh, something, is, is one strand that I will keep repeating as, as I go on with the presentation. But uh, the research uh, literature review is also something that helps me establish the context of the topic. And it also helps me enhance and acquire the uh, subject vocabulary and uh, at times it helps me understand the structure of the subject as well. So it helps me place each work in the context of its contribution to the problem that I'm discussing. 
and it also the review helps me to uh, provide an uh, overview of the relationship of the work with each other so uh, for example if, if there is there's a work on on uh, computer mediated communication which suggests that uh, the lack of uh, social cues is is what helps communication there might be other works which which uh, speak uh, in, in in a different language so my review will uh, help me place this work in that particular uh, 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 dimension and it also helps me identify the new ways to interpret prior research because it's not just about the microstructure we are also able to see the holistic view of the subject and that is where i can relate and interpret prior research as well and if there are gaps existing there it will help me identify those gaps too uh, as i said uh, there could be uh, seeming uh, conflicts between between you know two studies which which appear uh, very different so the research uh, so the literature review will help me resolve those conflicts or to provide the common strands in those conflicts and also it helps me uh, identify the prior scholarship which has already taken place so my work is not just a duplication of of that work so in that way it tells uh, it tells me what is the additional work that needs to be done and how i can locate my own research work within the context of the existing literature uh, this is from dave harris's book and he talks about uh, these uh, important uh, structures of, of uh, uh, the literature review process so it begins with uh, uh, identification of what the project is so we, we start off with uh, defining or uh, uh, suggesting what what is the project about and what is the research question so these are two important things that we must keep in mind before we start on the review process itself and the second important thing to uh, remember is what are the main general theories that set the context of my work and what are the main specific characteristics or dimensions and whether there are any specific variables that i am looking forward to and just like uh, a, a review uh, or, or writing a research paper a literature review must also have an outline and the main sections and for each sub uh, section we must have certain subsections where we write an introductory sentence and at least four or five important sources that define that section uh, then uh, we have four very important things to consider when I'm trying to uh, synthesize the information on, on literature reviews. First of all is the chronology of events. So if, if it is a, 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 any, any kind of an argument or a, a debate, then how has it uh, proceeded from, from, from one uh, place to another? For example, uh, if, if I'm talking about uh, the public opinion theory by, by Walter Lippmann, then from 1922 onwards, what are the various strands of, of discussion? there so that chronology is something that i must uh, be, be, be very clear about and also at times the publication chronology is important where we discuss about uh, how all these uh, publications by, by year you know how they've been published but we must be very careful ab uh, about uh, translated projects for example uh, the structural transformation of uh, a public sphere by habermas it was written in german in 1962 but it was uh, translated in English only in 1989. So we have to be careful about the chronology that uh, publication uh, uh, year and also the thematic and the conceptual uh, dimensions, whether I can categorize them into certain thematic and conceptual categories. And of course, what are the different methods they've adopted to answer the same research question? So at, at its very basic literature review ad, uh, answers two important questions. One, I'm looking at work which, whose research questions are very similar to mine. And also I'm looking at how they have uh, approached that research question or what are their methodological approaches. So this is another thing that I must keep in mind when I uh, carry for, forth with my literature review process. Uh, it's important to talk about various types of literature review before we get into the uh, nuts and bolts of how that uh, uh, these uh, reviews are carried out. So at its very basic, we might uh, think of uh, describing the uh, literature review uh, thing or categorizing them into three main categories. One is the summary overview. The second is the research background. And the third is the research study or, or the systematic review. So uh, let's go and talk about uh, all these three things in, in uh, brief. So the summary review is something which is very common in textbooks, for example. It gives me a sense of the range of ideas in the subject. So what are the main fields and uh, 
uh, we are basically trying to summarize those ideas without providing any new analytical insight. Uh, providing an analytical insight is not what, I'm what, what I intend to do. My idea is only to summarize what has been done in that uh, field. So this is more uh, uh, of, of an information and a lot of our research work will not be about uh, summarizing all the work that has been done in the field, but we'll have to provide some analytical insight to that work. And there, uh, there's no preference for any one kind of voice because uh, in our literature review process, we will be talking about the writer's voice, the author's voice, because it's important to realize that it is our work. So every sentence must be our voice and we'll talk about how to uh, get that voice in, in, in the literature review process. So it's not about just uh, putting others' ideas one after the other, but uh, providing our inputs to those ideas and trying to categorize them or to look for contradictions or to look for uh, uh, certain themes there in those arguments. Uh, the other part is the research background review and that is what is probably more important for uh, the kind of literature review that we look for in thesis or dissertations. And that provides a background for, for this specific study that we are doing by discussing the ideas that helped frame the research question. So all ideas that are related to this review process, they will be there in the uh, uh, research background review where we are looking for those ideas. And as I said at the beginning, we are looking at uh, what are the inputs that led me to this particular theoretical formulation that I'm doing in my present research work. Uh, research study is a formal study in itself. It is a, 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 a kind of a meta-analysis or, or a systematic reviews also, as I will suggest in my next slide, where it's a formal uh, way of uh, uh, doing research in, in a manner in which we uh, find out uh, uh, all the other related work that has, that has carried on in this particular field. And the objective is to develop new knowledge and to draw conclusions from newly gathered empirical evidence. So based on this evidence, this is a study in itself. And as I said, uh, one of the studies is, is meta-analysis. And the other is the systematic review where we are providing an overview of existing work using pre-specified standardized methods where we identify and appraise uh, 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 relevant data, relevant data uh, 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 which, are, which are linked to the theme or which are uh, uh, closely associated with the theme that we are talking about. So we are trying to document and critically evaluate and summarize all the research about a clearly defined research problem. So it, it could be the uh, framing paradigm and everything that is that is related to the framing paradigm and its uh, related concepts of uh, second level agenda setting and uh, emphasis framing and, and equivalence framing for that matter. And we are trying to uh, uh, document and critically evaluate uh, uh, using all those methods and to provide uh, a kind of, of, of uh, uh, the latest uh, updated views and uh, 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 a kind of a typology if I can uh, perform on that uh, uh, research problem. Uh, another kind of a research uh, 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 literature review is, is a argumentative review where we are examining literature selectively in order to support or refute an argument. So either we are trying to build up a contrarian argument as I suggest here or we are trying to just uh, support that kind of an argument. So we are looking at, at uh, different arguments and uh, our, our review process is, suppo is supposed to support or contradict that kind of opinion. Historical review focuses on examining research uh, through, through, throughout a period of time. So, so it can uh, start off right from the beginning and how it has emerged over the years. So it can be about uh, uh, the, the concept of public sphere beginning from, from 50s and 60s and how it has developed to incorporate uh, media uh, or, or new media as we know it of the present age. And of course, there's the methodological review where we focus not what uh, you know somebody has found or what the findings are, but how they came about saying what they say or what was the method of analysis. And as I said in the beginning, that is also a very important uh, uh, part of the review process because we have to understand how different people have addressed a similar research question. 
and uh, there's this type of review uh, uh, which is known as the theoretical review where we examine the corpus of theory that has accumulated uh, uh, in regard to that particular field so the theoretical review helps us establish what are the theories that exist what is the relationship between them and to what degree the existing theories have been investigated and and whether new hypotheses can be tested in light of those theories so that also is a very important review process uh, there is this work by cooper where he has very succinctly provided these six characteristics on which we can discuss or we can classify the literature reviews so uh, he talks about focus and goal and perspective and coverage and organization and audience so we can be looking at research uh, 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 we can be looking at literature reviews which look at the research outcomes for example that what have been the outcomes of of this uh, particular work and also literature or research methods uh, that they might have adopted or uh, 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 theories uh, in those particular uh, uh, works or uh, how those theories have led to particular uh, applications or or uh, practices so that is one of the ways in which we can categorize different uh, work on a particular field we can also find out whether the goal of that particular work has been integration or whether it is criticism of of particular work or whether the goal has or whether the goal of uh, the review process is to identify the central issues so we can be looking at at integrating all the work that is available or critiquing that work or identifying central issues in that particular field uh, we could have a neutral uh, uh, position where we are just looking at all the various strands of opinion or we could be having our own opinion as i said or we can have our own position and we might try and uh, support our position through uh, uh, available evidence uh, we can also have a review which is exhaustive of all the content which is uh, existing in the field or we could be looking at a representative content or we could be looking at content which is which is central or pivotal to the field that we are studying or the research questions uh, or the research problems that we are addressing so it could be organized historically as we've already suggested uh, uh, beginning in a kind of a chronological manner or we could be categorizing it in terms of concepts or in terms of methodologies also and one of the ways in which we can think about literature reviews is also to think about whether it is addressed to specialized scholars whether it's addressed to general scholars or to policy makers or it is addressed to the general public at large uh, this is another uh, way of uh, suggesting how to carry forth the uh, literature review process this is by mackie and mcavoy and uh, they, they start with selecting a topic developing tools of argumentation searching the literature based on certain keywords and such characteristic and then surveying that literature to look for certain trends and themes and categories and then critiquing that literature and finally writing the review so in, in pre today's presentation i'll be talking of some of these things not necessarily in this order but uh, this is just to suggest that this is one of the ways in which we can look at the literature review process in a linear form uh, this is again from efron and rabbit's book this is uh, uh, describing the uh, review process in in, in uh, these particular uh, uh, in this particular linear fashion so it uh, starts off with choosing a particular topic then locating the work uh, in in various sources or locating uh, the research uh, work in in, in uh, um, it, it could be books or it could be articles or it could be documents and other kind of things then analyzing and evaluating them and uh, uh, finally synthesizing them it's important for us to have the writer's voice because it is our work that must uh, come out uh, through the work and it shouldn't be uh, just a collection of uh, other people's words on the issue and finally editing and refining the uh, uh, literature review process uh, there are quite a few sources and it, it can range from books and monographs and dissertations and reference works and then journals and periodicals it could be uh, trade magazines it could be newspapers it could be website it could be blogs so there are lots and lots of uh, uh, uh sources that we can uh, go back to for for looking for for uh, ideas and looking for themes and looking for previous work that would have been done in the particular area 
Uh, another important decision that we often have to make is to find out whether to include a particular source in the review or not. So say for example, if we do a Google Scholar search uh, for, for, for uh, the keywords in the project that we are doing, then we might land up with hundreds and hundreds of sources in, in, in the field. So which are the ones that we should include and which are the ones which we should exclude? So uh, Bruce uh, provides uh, some kind of uh, answer to that and uh, the answers are that first of all whether it is topical or whether the keyword the keywords there are, are similar to the ones that we are looking for. Whether that work is comprehensive enough, whether they are dealing with, with uh, a similar research question in a comprehensive manner and whether the breadth of that, that work is, 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 is wide enough so that they include uh, things uh, related to, to my central theme that I am working with. Also whether it is relevant, so relevant is, is uh, uh, slightly uh, different from, from topicality in that sense. So we are looking at the uh, relevance uh, with, with the work that we are doing. One very important thing to remember is whether the work is current or not because if the work is not current or if we are not including enough current work in our, our, our review, uh, then there might be some very important gaps that can be easily avoided. Uh, then the, whether the works that we are uh, using for our review, whether they are authoritative in our field. And uh, of course, access is an important thing, whether all the work that I'm looking for, whether they are easily accessible or not. Uh, important to decide on the structure of the literature review process also. So uh, this is uh, another uh, suggestion by, by these authors and they say that the first thing is to assemble and collect the data. So catalog all the important work or, or the most important work in the fields and you could be building list of authors, you could be cataloging citations and, and it's important always to work with, with some kind of, of a reference manager or, or a, uh, 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 these uh, citation software so that you know you can uh, right at the beginning you can uh, do that in a very systematic manner that as, as you go on uh, cataloging the work you keep on adding them to the bibliography or keep them adding them to your reference list so it could be done on Microsoft Word also for example and you could be adding to the reference list there so then in, in stage two you arrange and categorize the major works into categories so it could be through, through, through authors, it could be key descriptors, it could be chronology, it could be theory, it could be methods. So we uh, arrange them into these uh, different categories. And then we organize core maps and outlines according to the theme patterns. And then finally we look for, for uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the arguments there and we create a storyline. And that is important to create a, a, a thematic structure or, or to create a uh, a, a reasonable argument which which uh, 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 collates all, all these uh, arguments and, and these categories and that's very important because uh, that's where you know this this mind mapping and this outline discovery is, is uh, important. So I'll briefly describe the steps that we need to do in this literature review process. The step one is to get an overview of uh, uh, each of the important work that we have identified. And then we uh, group them by category and we have decided and we've already discussed that which are the categories that we can talk about. And then we conduct a more focused literature review if we find that there are uh, gaps, more uh, focused literature search if I can use that term. And before we start this process, we must be very organized uh, ourselves and we must know where to uh, uh, and how to uh, tabulate all these things and I will discuss that in today's presentation also. Uh, so we uh, are advised to use a spreadsheet or a table to compile all the notes that we take. And if we are not doing it systematically, then later on when we try to compile all this information into a cogent argument, then probably we'll be in, in, in some trouble. So uh, of course, if you are already adding it to, to your reference list, then you are writing down the author's name, the title, the publication year, the, 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 the journal uh, um, identifier, and, and, and also you have to on the spreadsheet have, have a summary or an abstract and the methodology and the findings. So as experienced researchers, we get used to uh, 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 skimming through the document in a manner in which we just find out what are the important information and then summarizing it and writing it into uh, some, some kind of an electronic notebook also. So that notebook could be like uh, one of these uh, coronal notes where uh, 
and this is easily available on on, on uh, uh, Google. So you could be searching for cardinal roads, and you can be uh, uh, creating these kind of notes for all the work you do, where you have the main ideas on one section. You write down notes about that, and then you summarize that. And if you're doing this uh, systematically, then at the end of the process, you will have a lot of uh, 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 these notes from which you can draw upon to draw into your categories or to draw into your uh, uh, thematic mapping and all. We have to be very flexible as we compile the notes, so we can't uh, afford to be extremely rigid in these kind of things. But be very careful in copying author's exact words because we have to paraphrase them. If we use uh, a lot of the author's own words, then there will be a lot of problems with, with uh, similarity and such things. Uh, then we go for what is known as the deep analysis, where we look for explicit, explicit definition of key terms in the literature that we're reviewing. We're looking for key statistics also, because we might be using those statistics in the work that we are doing. Uh, we must be very aware, uh, we must be very careful, and we must pay special attention to review articles and also take note of short but important quotations. At times, we might be needing those important quotations. And also looking for the methodological strengths and weaknesses in the work that we are uh, studying. Uh, important to distinguish between assertion and evidence that whether uh, the authors of the work that we are reviewing, whether they are uh, providing any evidence for their work or not. And also to identify the major trends in the work. Or so, so after reviewing uh, or after reading to or skimming through a lot of uh, similar work, what are the major trends and what are the gaps, uh, if any, in, in that particular work? And whether there is any relationship. And uh, so, so at, at the same time, we must also closely see how each article relates to our topic. And we will also uh, 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 keep on looking back at the reference li list, we, which we keep on compiling as we uh, carry on with the review process. As I said, at, at every stage, we are writing down the, 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 the uh, author's name and all those things in our database. It could be Microsoft Word or it could be some citation managers that we are comfortable with. It could be Mendeley, it could be Zotero, it could be EndNotes, anything that, that, that you are comfortable with. But then you, you look back and you see whether it is current, whether, whether all the uh, updated uh, new development in the field are, are there and whether the coverage is, is, is wide or uh, uh, whether the breadth of the coverage is good enough. So this is uh, one very uh, important uh, uh, advice uh, from, from, from one of these authors, uh, Dave Harris, and he, this is about starting from the core and working outwards. So this author advises not to look for those search terms and all, but uh, the, the uh, uh, argument is very simple. that start with a research project, which is very similar to uh, yours or, or uh, which, whose research problems or whose research questions are similar to yours. And then focus on the specific pieces that explicitly relate to the kind of work you're doing. So uh, related work as well. And then structure your review to cover the same general sources and ideas that they did with the addition of any uh, uh, extra concerns that you might add. So you start off with, the, with those kind of work and then you keep on adding to that. And that's how you start from the core and you work outwards. So that's a very good piece of advice that rather than going from from the search items and you know looking at, at uh, textbooks and those kind of things, looking at uh, the uh, central work and then working around that central work. So there are a lot of works on uh, how a proper search uh, should, should, should work. And in this section, I'm going to talk about uh, search. So uh, one of the uh, definitions or one of the ideas is to start with the most res uh, recent research you can find on your topic. So say, for example, if you're doing on COVID-19 reporting, then look out for the most recent research uh, through a Google search. It could be Google Scholar or whatever. And then do an exploratory, uh, uh, exploratory online search uh, at home. It could be, as I said, a, a simple Google search. And then record carefully and systematically every source you find to enable you to retrieve this information more easily later. So you have to keep on because you might come across some good work and you're very excited about that work. But later on, you know, if you, if you don't record it that at that moment, you might not recall it. And, and you know, you, you, you strain your mind to see that what was that particular work and then a lot of uh, valuable time is lost. So whenever you find out an important work, record it in your uh, 
database. As I said, it can be the uh, Microsoft Office, MS Office uh, or MS Word, Microsoft Word uh, uh, reference section is one very simple way where we can just add in the uh, new references as, as we uh, go along. Or we can use some citation managers also, but important to record that. And then use our research questions to find keywords which are similar to our research topics or it could be the keywords in the work that, that I uh, find there uh, through a Google search as well. We might also use a thesaurus. It could be an online thesaurus to look for similar uh, words, keywords or, or, or uh, descriptors and then look out for uh, those good articles that, that we can find out on that particular field. And then do a discipline related database. So we can talk about EBSCO, for example, if you're talking about uh, media and communication and uh, readily available search engines like Google Scholar, for example. So uh, this is again an important idea about uh, when we uh, look for that search, we are looking for what are the key theories there? What are the epistemological and ontological grounds there? So uh, how do they deal with questions of epistemology and ontology? What are the main questions that, that uh, they have addressed till date? Uh, how is the knowledge on the topic structured and organized? Uh, what are the origins and definitions of those topics? What are the political standpoints? What are the major issues and debates about the topic? And how have those approaches to those questions increased our understanding and knowledge? So that's again a very uh, uh, important uh, thing to look at. So we can, as I said, use uh, uh, key descriptors as central themes to create core idea maps. And uh, this is what I'm going to describe in my next slide. So uh, we can also uh, reorganize them according to authors or we can, you know, uh, according to, to citations, etc. So uh, we carry forth with this. So this is what a core map, uh, a core idea or key term map looks like. So that is the core idea. It could be, say, for example, news framing. And there could be a lot of sub concepts related to this core idea. For example, we could be looking at agenda setting. We could be looking at priming. We could be looking at equivalence framing. We could be looking at emphasis framing. So we are looking at concepts related to the core idea. And then we look for relationship between those concepts. And that's important because uh, those are the relationships that will help me define or help me refine my, my problems. And then we also list down the uh, elements on, on those sub concepts. So if we carry forth from the core idea, then, then what are the related sub concepts? And within those sub concepts, what are the other elements? So that will uh, help me visualize my core idea as I go along. Uh, I can use all these databases. I've already spoken about EBSCO. We can use JSTOR, which is very easily available. ProQuest is also a collection of databases co covering uh, social sciences, and it uh, provides an uh, index to, to, to full text articles in, in over 1000 social science journals. There is Sage Premier, and there are other online databases also. So that is what we can look for when we are doing that uh, literature review search. One very important thing that we must understand is the uh, analysis of an argument. So it is important to understand the argument that other authors have provided in their work. And I must also know this for, for uh, the arguments that I will pro be providing in my kind of a work. So there are four basic things that we are looking there. We are looking at the data. We are looking at, at the claim that we are looking at something which is known as warrant and we are looking at a backing. I will explain these terms in the next two slides, but important to understand how an argument is made and how we address those arguments. So as I said in my previous slide, uh, the first one is, is, is claim. So it is an arguable statement. So it can be any kind of statement and that statement has to be backed by some evidence and without that evidence that statement has uh, no meaning uh, scientifically but there has to be an expectation that links uh, uh, between uh, the evidence and the claim so that is known as warrant or permit and finally we have to provide some kind of backing to that uh, uh, warrant and to the evidence in the next slide i will uh, provide a live example of uh, what these four things mean but important as researchers to understand these four concepts about what is claim, what is evidence, what is warrant a public permit and what is how do we back uh, our, our uh, warrant and evidence. 
So as I said in my last slide, the first is the claim. The claim here is that car owners should restrict washing their cars. This is based on the data that car washes uh, can use up uh, up to 2.5 lakh gallons of water. So this this uh, depletes water reservoirs by 20%. So this is the data and uh, and the claim is that car owners should restrict washing. And uh, this has there has to be some link as I said which is known as warrant which has to link the uh, claim and the data and, and and the warrant here is that water is essential and people should not waste. That is why the claim is backed by data and there is a warrant for that uh, uh, link between claim and data. And finally, we must have a backing or we must have a reason why we are talking about uh, 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 that particular uh, uh, warrant. And the backing is that water shortage, shortages can cause lots and lots of inconvenience to everybody and it, it is dangerous for people as well. So uh, now to the writing part of uh, uh, literature review and I'm very uh, quickly going to talk about some few very important tips on, on writing literature reviews. So uh, before we begin, we must understand the importance of originality. So uh, this is just to give a, give a description of what, what originality means, uh, especially in social sciences. So first of all, it must be produced using our own faculties. It must be produced using, using our, our own uh, processes, very important. Without copy or imitation, it, it shouldn't be uh, copied. It shouldn't have been done before in, in certain ways. So there must be some newness to what we are doing. It must be new in style, character, substance or form. So newness, uh, we are talking about what are the dimensions of those newness. It should be authentic. It should be the result of thought. So all these elements are important uh, in terms of originality. So uh, we must ensure that the work we are doing is pretty original. Uh, this is very difficult. Uh, the, one of the difficulties of, of the writing process is that the ideas are typically intertwined and interdependent. But when we are writing down, that writing has to be done in a linear fashion because uh, uh, it has to, as I said, it has to have a structure and it, it, it must uh, have, have a particular thematic discussion or, or the kind of things that we have discussed earlier. So to, to write them out in a linear fashion is, is, is quite a task and, and we should be very clear about which are the ideas we should begin with and how to carry forward with that. So important to select the most important points in each of these sources and how they relate to the research problem. So it could be thematic, it could be methodological, it could be chronological as I said but how that information is, is related to the research problem. So the most important point and then how that is related to uh, our research uh, problem. Uh, we will not be using direct quotes as we said right at the beginning, but at times we might need to uh, uh, quote certain terminologies which, which have been coined by those authors or we might be requiring that, that to emphasize certain things. But uh, we must make uh, some short quotes and if there are long quotes, it's better to go for paraphrases unless there are very strong reasons not for paraphrasing them. And as I said in the beginning, we must remember to summarize and synthesize because within each thematic paragraph and as throughout the review also. So we must be looking at, at not only the trees, but at the woods also at the same time. So that is why summarizing and synthesizing at the same time and uh, uh, recapitulating the important features of, of any research study that is there in the review, but also synthesizing it by rephrasing the study's significance and relating it to the work that I am doing. Very important to have our own voice because the literature uh, review generally presents others ideas and of course it is others ideas and we are trying to synthesize those ideas but our voice should remain front and center because whenever we are uh, weaving reference to other sources we have to maintain our own voice. So one of the ways is by starting and ending the paragraph with your own ideas and own wording. So you are putting your own ideas and in between you are using those evidences from others work to just establish your ideas but it's important that our voice comes through in the literature review process. So uh, it's not only about about others contents but three or four very important things about others works. So one of this is how are they organizing their ideas? What are the methods they've used to study the problem? 
what theories have been used to explain predict or understand that research problem and what are the sources that those people have cited in their work so all that have have to be intervened and and weaved into our uh, lit uh, literature review writing process uh I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes that are that are generally seen in the literature review process. One of it is that sources do not clearly relate to the research problem. So if they're not related to my research problem, they shouldn't be there in the review in the first place. And, and often it relies on secondary analytical sources. So uh, if, if, for example, our, our work is on, on a public sphere, it should not be only about what other people have written about Habermas's work, but we must also be citing his own work. So if, if, they, if, if my literature review uh, relies only on secondary analytical sources, then there's a major gap that, that uh, we should have uh, filled long ago. Uh, we should not uh, uncritically accept other, uh, others' findings. So, so we must uh, have, have a point of view or we must uh, critically examine their findings and their interpretations. Uh, often people uh, want uh, uh, the literature review process also to describe the search procedures. But as I said in an earlier slide, this may not always be necessary. Uh, we must not report isolated statistical results. We must think of uh, synthesizing them. So we must also include uh, 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 research which does not validate our assumption. We must not be cherry picking, which I said right at the beginning. So to sum up, I'll just uh, repeat uh, uh, two or three very important things that I've already discussed. Uh, literature review process involves uh, these four things. First of all, the first thing is the problem formulation. So what is the topic that is being examined and what are the component issues? What are the related issues to the topic? Then finding material relevant to the subject being explored. So lo looking for uh, all relevant material which are relevant to, to, to my topic. Then we evaluate the data. We determine which literature makes a significant contribution to the understanding of the to uh, topic. So they are, they are important for my work. And then discussing the finding and conclusion of, of per, per, per pertinent literature. So, so of a similar literature, we are also discussing the, the conclusions and findings. So if I have to represent that in a diagrammatical format, we start off with the research questions. We choose keywords for search. We choose which databases we should be searching for and what are the, what are the subjects that we must be looking for. Then we locate those things. We expand at times the search if it is too narrow or, or generally it's the other way that it, it's too huge and we'll have to narrow the search. So there are uh, those Boolean expressions like and for example, which can be used to narrow down the uh, sources. And at the same time, we have to keep on recording all the citations and create a bibliography as we go along. Uh, I will talk about just uh, some of the uh, uh, popular citation managers. So EndNote is, is, is one of them. Zotero is also, uh, is also very popular with, with many researchers. And uh, so is RefWorks. And of course, Mendeley is, is what a lot of uh, researchers uh, talk very highly about. Thank you so much for, 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 your, for your patience and, and I'll keep coming back with a lot more on media and communication theory and research. Thank you very much.